In this lesson, we will quickly recall the history of the Iraq National Museum of Baghdad, trying to outline its main characteristics. Museums try to present the past through their collection and by displaying the traces of this past. Therefore, a national museum has a great potential in the state-building process, especially in a recently established nation with numerous ethnic and religious groups. That was the case of Iraq in the 20s. A peculiarity of the Iraq National Museum is that its creation was not performed by Iraqis, but by the British, in a period characterized by the Western domination in archaeology, as well as in politics. So, from a political point of view, the establishment of a national museum in Iraq was seen as a natural development of the British mandate in the country. Originally, the Iraq Museum did not aim at displaying a narrative of the country's ancient history, but rather at being mainly a storage house. A record of the scientific archaeological expedition in the country, at the beginning only foreign expeditions, and an important medium with a socio-pedagogical role. Another peculiarity of the Iraq Museum is that, differently from other national museums in Europe or America, it was filled on with items discovered in the country. The museum did not display a universal collection as the European Museum did at the time, but artifacts exclusively coming from Iraq itself. Still today, this remains a key feature of the Iraq Museum a unique museum of the national history of a single country, Iraq, but, of course, of the entire human history as well. As regards its collections, in the first decade of its life, the Iraq Museum had little to show about the ancient Islamic history and art. The Umayyad and Abbasid Caliphates, such as the other Islamic and Ottoman periods, were almost totally neglected. Indeed, the collection at the time tend to emphasize only the most ancient artifacts and history with the aim of depicting a pre-Islamic common past for all the peoples of the country. Of course, this was the point of view of the British founders of the new museum. The founder of the Iraq Museum was Gertrude Bell, the daughter of a wealthy English industrialist. In the years before the First World War, she traveled extensively through Iraq, Arabia, Syria, Persia, learning Farsi and Arabic and surveying numerous archaeological sites. Gertrude Bell is a controversial figure, which played a crucial role in establishing the Hasmite leadership of King Faisal I. At the same time, she was appointed Honorary Director of Antiquities of Iraq in 1922, founded the museum in 1923, and finally, in 1924, formulated an antiquities law for the country. As she proudly stated in a letter to her stepmother, she saw her project for the Iraq Museum as a real museum rather like the British Museum, only a little smaller. The first small Iraq museum opened in 1923 and was based in a simple room of the Kushla Sarai, the Ottoman administrative complex. However, already in 1926, Gertrude Bell found a more appropriate building in the northern part of Baghdad for housing the increasing quantities of antiquities coming from the many new excavation carried out in the 20s by the foreign expeditions. At this time, the museum hosted between 3,000 to 4,000 objects, all of them dating from the pre-Islamic past of the country. Initially, this lack of Islamic past in the collection of the Iraq Museum caused its exclusion from the Iraqi political and cultural life. Fortunately, in the following years, the museum acquired new important collection, then a short guide was published and the number of visitors increased. Moreover, in 1936, 
a small amount of the antiquities from the German excavation in the Islamic sites of Samara was returned to Iraq and formed the earliest Islamic collection of the museum. Since then, the museum became an important vehicle in the political and cultural life of the country. In the 30s and 40s, the Iraq Museum continued to grow and the project for a new building was commissioned by the director of antiquities, Satih al-Husri, to the German architect Werner March. The new location was in Salihia, on the west bank of the Tigris. At the two corners of the plot assigned to the new museum, replicas of a Syrian gate and of the Lion of Babylon, symbols of the greatness of the Mesopotamian civilization, were built. However, the erection of the building of the museum was stopped by the Second World War and the new museum will have been inaugurated only in 1966. The importance of the museum and in general of archaeology in the Iraq cultural and political scene of the following years is mirrored in another famous project meant as an innovative and futuristic museum proposed by one of the greatest architects of the time. In 1957, the American architect Frank Lloyd Wright included in his urbanistic project of a cultural city in Baghdad the project of a new, longer, two-story museum of antiquities, a magnificent project that will never be realized. Finally, in the 80s, a new wing was added to the old building of the Iraq Museum, doubling the space available for the collection. In the meantime, archaeology had assumed great strategic importance within the political ideology of Saddam Hussein's regime through a rewriting of history for propaganda purposes. The governmental promotion of the archaeological culture was implemented through the creation of regional archaeological museum, with the aim of presenting the history of Mesopotamian civilization to the local community as well. The political manipulation of history and archaeology is extremely common in dictatorships in the 20th century Europe as well, and this should be taken into consideration when a regime is overthrown by a coup, revolution, an invasion, it should be taken into consideration that culture and its products, which have been the image of propaganda, can be identified with the old regime itself and, as such, neglected, damaged or even destroyed by the new opposants. During the Gulf War in 91, nine regional museums in the provinces became a target for organized looters. More than 4,000 objects were stolen from these museums, which were then closed to the public. In 2003, a big crime involving the Iraq Museum and its collection was committed. Looters broke into the museum and sacked it. The looting continues for three days. Before it sacked, the museum housed more than 200,000 artifacts, and therefore it was and still is one of the most important collections in the world. Despite thousands of objects disappeared forever and many statues or items were smashed, we must remember that many of the antiquities stolen from the museum were returned back by the Iraqi people himself in the days following the sack. Only after this catastrophe, Great international efforts were started or intensified in order to restore the damaged antiquities, to train young Iraqi conservators, to complete security systems and reopen the galleries of the museum. Finally, after more than a decade of work and precarious safety conditions, in 2015 the Iraq Museum reopened its doors to visitors. Today, it welcomes many visitors who continue to be fascinated by the wonders displaying this meaningful institution, vital for the cultural life of the Iraqi people and of all the humankind.